poltergeist, death and military phantoms await the most haunted team as we journey to Essex. and welcome to a brand new series. This week we've travelled across country all the way to Essex to possibly one of the scariest places we have ever investigated. Welcome to Most Haunted and welcome to Coalhouse Fort. Built on the site of previous fortifications to protect the capital from invasion, its commanding situation on the banks of the Thames meant that any shipping heading for the port of London passed its imposing 20-foot thick exterior walls, bristling with cannon. Building work was overseen by Charles George Gordon of the Royal Engineers. The fort covers a vast area under which run an incredible network of tunnels, the biggest of which were used for the movement and storage of ammunition. The fort was used during both world wars, so it's no surprise that ghosts of soldiers have been seen. What drew the attention of the most haunted crew were the many reports that Coalhouse Fort is rich in paranormal activity. Not surprising there are many sightings of ghostly soldiers, as well as orbs, light anomalies, strange mists and sudden drops in temperature. With such a vast area to cover, both above and below ground, we took the decision to split the investigation over two nights. So what would our historian Leslie Smith make of such an unusual location? This is one of the best examples of a fortified site of its type of the 1860s under Palmerston's law. But actually the site goes back very much further than that. It needed to be fortified so close to the Thames. Not least of all because 70% of all shipping had to go past here and it would have needed protecting. Tonight we're going to explore some of its past by going deep into the bowels of the fort there is an absolute labyrinth of tight, dark corridors. It's a dizzying experience being down there. Behind me are over 400 meters of tunnels and every inch of them are haunted by possibly the most violent ghosts we will ever have encountered. When inside this claustrophobic warren of paranormal activity, it becomes all too clear that the first thing to tackle is your own fear. With every step, the walls seem to close in, and when the lights are out, you literally cannot see your hands in front of your face. But if those things aren't too much, you just might bump headlong into one of the many phantoms that have been witnessed by many people. A huge dark figure has been seen endlessly wandering these tunnels. Many people have heard agonizing groans and screams echoing in the night. But one nasty entity that is said to roam here likes to grab people and throw them to the floor. There are 28 rooms off this corridor and nearly all have a ghost story attached to them. Poltergeists, phantom children, nausea and dizziness have all been experienced in these areas. But the most frightening apparition that floats around is that of a cowering spirit that lurks in corners groaning and shaking with fright. But it is these tunnels that could prove to be the most frightening of all during our investigation as they have never been fully investigated by a paranormal group before, although they are said to be extremely haunted. With a place so vast and so full of paranormal activity, will myself and the rest of the Most Haunted crew succeed? 
Only time will tell. Alongside the most haunted regulars, this series will see some new faces joining us from time to time to give a different insight to our investigations. We asked paranormal investigator Ryan O'Neill, veteran of many investigations by Scottish Paranormal, based in Fife, to take part in our investigation within Coalhouse Fort. I asked Ryan why locations with a military connection always seem to be rich in paranormal activity. Ryan, whenever we've investigated um, any buildings or locations to do with World War II on Most Haunted, we seem to get the most incredible phenomena, sometimes quite violent, and that seems to be the case here in the tunnels, doesn't it? Yeah, the, when we do our investigations as well in areas, um, you know, it's associated with World War II and things, the emotion and the distress that maybe it's itself into the, the environment and things like that, maybe that's something to do with it. Um, we find that you do get a lot of things, you maybe get things moving, noises, temperature drops, things like that. I mean, we're dealing down in those tunnels. You, I mean, seriously, we've been into some very dark places before, and I know you have, but you cannot see your hand in front of your face. It's when you've got your eyes open, you actually think that you've got your eyes closed. It's that dark. Is there anything that the team should be wary of this evening? You, well, obviously the, the health and safety aspect of it as well, it's really dark down there. <laughs> um, you can't see, you actually lose your bearings if you, you turn around quickly. You won't know if you're facing the wall, if you're facing along the tunnel. Um, I'd be careful of that. Also, it kills your senses a little, so I think a lot of people will experience things that may not be there, which is only going to heighten things even more. And what part of the investigation are you looking forward to most? What, what bit do you think, oh, I can't wait to do X, Y or Z? Which bit? I'm, I'm looking forward to going along the tunnels. Um, I've went along there in the daylight, but it was pitch black, so I can imagine what it's going to be like tonight. Okay, particularly the calf, I think. Might, you might have to look after her a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> She's already jumping out of her skin. It's, it's certainly a scary area. It's one of the scariest areas I've been into. Fantastic. Can't wait. The team were eager to begin our scrutiny of Coalhouse Fort and we opted to go underground into the tunnels for a lit walk around with guest medium Johnny Ferrari. What would the night ahead hold for us? I went back. Okay, thank you very much. I think there's a lot of things haunting this location. All I have is this man has one eye. No, wait yeah, a minute. I, I heard it. that. Did you die here in this place? The team are exploring Coal House Fort in Essex, a vast defensive site under which run a huge maze of tunnels. We begin our investigation with a lit walk around in order to give us an idea of the enormity of what lies ahead. As well as the team regulars, we are joined by guest paranormal investigator Ryan O'Neill, our historian Leslie Smith and guest medium Johnny Ferrari, who aided our investigation of Hever Castle. What would Johnny make of the tunnels? Okay, Johnny, Ryan, the tunnels. And Ryan, you've already had a look round this place, but Johnny, this is new for you. And I cannot tell you, when the lights go off, it is absolutely pitch, pitch black. And I'm not psychic, but I know that there's stuff down here. There really, really is. I think there's a lot of things haunting this location. I think that not only are there people haunting this location, but it could also be animals. Animals? It's a lot of, it's a lot of energy down here. It's not just one thing. Uh -huh. It's not just one thing that's down here. Okay. Any it negative feels, feeling? Not yet. It just feels like a crypt, but it doesn't feel like things have been laid to rest as of yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So maybe by us being here, we can probably help the situation? Mm. <laughs> we'll do something to the situation. I don't know what. <laughs> well, that's good. But we hope to help. But yeah. this is this is a really the further that we're going in, I'm not feeling claustrophobic, but it's very close. It's my heart is is starting to beat a little bit faster. Do you do you actually see in your mind's eye what this was used for before? Can you see people? Can you see what they were dressed in? The first thing that I got 
when I um, when I drove up to this place was it was older than what we see it's a story behind a story mm -hmm. you know like the facade outside I, I thought there should be a portcullis out there I think I thought that there should be something that's far more ancient than what we see I think that where we are now has gone through um, it's gone through many changes it didn't always look this way this is what I'm picking up there's a story behind the story it looked a lot different than what it is right now than what 